Hey guys, it's Poe back again with Let's Get Techie. Um, there is one thing that I've learned over the last six-ish months. You will never understand how busy your life is going to be until you have a child. I don't have time for anything anymore. That's why I haven't uploaded in so long. Um, it's the greatest blessing in the world, but before you have a child, get all the sleep you can because there is none of that afterwards. Today, we're going to take a look at a product that I got from China. This is going to be uh, the second episode in a series that I call Does It Work? Uh, so we pick up an item that we find online, uh, we see what it claims to do, and then we test it and see if it uh, meets our expectations and does what it says it's going to do. Today we're looking at a product called the D-Lid Die Guard. And this is from a company called Iceman Cooler. Uh, I did get it from China. This came off of Ally Express. Uh, 15 minutes after I ordered it, I got a call from my bank that my credit card information had been compromised. Uh, so yeah, just thought I'd throw that out there. Um, if you're thinking about getting it, um, maybe use PayPal. Um, so today we're going to use this die guard to install our liquid cooler directly onto the die of our 8700K in our ITX build. So this build is an 8700K, 16 gigs of RAM, and a Titan XP. So this CPU is currently deleted. Uh, it's currently running liquid metal from Thermal Grizzly. So we're going to compare before and after temperatures of this CPU deleted with the liquid metal, but with the IHS reinstalled, versus with this product um, without the IHS at all. Uh, so let's go ahead and dive right in and get this thing installed. Alright, so that was a pretty straightforward installation, um, didn't really have any hiccups um, other than the fact that it is kind of cramped working in an ITX system to begin with. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at temperatures. What the f*** is that? So what happened? Um, our temperatures after about 30 minutes of testing with the normal D-LED uh, IHS reinstalled, uh, gotten to the mid to upper 80s. Uh, that was overclocked to 4.9 at, I believe, 1.375 volts. Um, somewhere in that neighborhood, it may have jumped up to 1.39 uh, after load line calibration. Uh, but as you can see on first boot with the die guard and direct die cooling, uh, we were hitting TJ Maxx almost immediately. Um, so what happened? Why is this not working? So I was able to figure it out. It took me probably 45 minutes or so of tinkering with it 
Um, I put a massive amount of liquid metal. Um, and from my previous videos, you guys get incredibly triggered by massive amounts of liquid metal. So this was even beyond that. Um, I wish I had taken a picture to show you. You guys would have legitimately freaked out. Um, but I put more on it to see if I was just getting a bad connection uh, between the cooler and the die itself um, to the point where I had way more than necessary on there and we were still hitting thermal throttle immediately on boot. So I knew that the cooler was not making a connection with the die. So if you'll take a look at this photo that I was able to snag um, at the corner of the socket, uh, there are actually uh, portions of it that the Z height is higher than the die. Um, now there was a warning on the page when I purchased this die guard that it may not be compatible with all motherboards and I believe this is what they were talking about although out of all the motherboards that I've looked at I haven't found one yet that does not have a higher Z height at the corner of the sockets like this. Um, so unfortunately to get this die guard to properly work you would have to cut off the corners of the socket, which I unfortunately just did not have time to do. Uh, so yeah, for episode two of Does It Work? What's my answer? Probably. It probably does work. I just don't have the capability of the time right now to start hacking up my ITX board uh, to find out. Now some other options, or at least one other option, would be to find a compatible cold plate. Uh, so that would be one that would dip down in the center to meet that die. And I know that they have made those in the past. Um, that's going to be more of a custom solution for an open loop. Uh, but I do know those have existed in the past. Um, unfortunately, that's where we're left for today. It's a good learning lesson. Uh, so if anybody was thinking about getting this, be prepared to either shave or cut down the corners of your socket or buy a specialized water block uh, that would be compatible with this. So that's going to do it for this one. I appreciate you guys watching. I uh, apologize for the erratic and or non-existent upload schedule as I alluded to in the beginning of the video. Uh, things change when you have children. Um, so we'll do our best to keep pumping out content. I appreciate you guys who have stayed subscribed and I appreciate all the new subscribers. Uh, even without an upload in the last three or four months, we've gained probably 300 subscribers. Uh, so I'm very grateful for that. Thank you to the community. Thank you for all your comments, uh, even the negative ones. I enjoy reading all of them, even the negative ones. Uh, so that's going to do it for this one, and we'll see you in the next one.